Now, this must come up because some of you will be thinking, well, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Whoa, we're talking about hormones here. What, what about the risks? The, the, aren't there risks with replacing hormones? And unfortunately, the press has got hold of this in a way that has distorted the whole picture, and frankly, they don't know what they're talking about, right? Let me tell you what the science shows, because I am talking about replacing hormones in a bioidentical form. What does that mean? It means that the molecules are identical to the molecules that you produce in your body, the same molecular structure. The hormones that you receive, ladies, as HRT, synthetic forms, or from uh, horse urine or equine estrogens, are for equine estrogens from horses are bioidentical for horses, <laughs> not for human beings. And the synthetic estrogens, the body has to adapt to those alien molecules to metabolize them in a way as safely as it can. The, 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 the met metabolic structures and, and mechanisms for handling by identical hormones are already in place because they're the same hormones that we produce. So this paper by Kent Hol Holtorf is a very good discussion of su and summarizes the research showing that bioidentical hormone replacement is safer than conventional HRT. He's not the only one to say it. Um, but this study that was published in this is so important, this study, I'm going to take a minute over it. This study, which was published in International Journal of Cancer in 2005, should have been headline press, but it wasn't. But this is the reason why. Here, you, we, it, they looked at nearly 70,000 women taking different forms of HRT. These women are not taking HRT. When they took estrogen on its own, there is, a, there is an increase in risk of breast cancer. This is what this is showing. There's an increased risk of breast cancer. When a woman takes estrogen with a synthetic progesterone, there is an increased risk in breast cancer, and it can be compounded depending on which form the progesterone or synthetic progesterone is in. Did you follow that? When, you, a woman, when women take estrogen with micronized natural progesterone, there is no increased risk of breast cancer. None. That is important enough a study for that to have been on every major newspaper about HRT. But guess what? Doctors still do not get this. 2005 this was published. It's not a small study either. So we have known for years that the way to administer hormones safely for women is to combine preferably a, a natural estrogen with absolutely always a natural progesterone, not a synthetic progesterone. Thereby, there will be no increased risk of breast cancer. It's how to protect our patient. The same study, I uh, beg your pardon, a, a different study in 2005, looked at the risk of um, deep vein thrombosis with different combinations of HRT. And guess what? It was the same thing. As you combine estrogen with synthetic progesterones, increased risk of deep vein thrombosis. But when you combine estrogen with natural progesterone, no increased risk. So the problem is combining estrogen with these synthetic progesterones. That's what increases the risk of clots and breast cancer. So it is not true which is uh, that, and this is what media and medicine is confusing. It is not true that all hormones have the same effect. They do not. Now, let me just, folk, just run you quickly through a few slides. The difference between natural progesterone effects not seen with progestins, which are synthetic progesterone. These are effects that you see with natural progesterone, not with synthetic. Helps balance estrogen, leaves the body quickly, improves sleep, natural calming effect, lowers high blood pressure, helps the body use and eliminate fat, fats, lowers cholesterol, increases scalp hair, helps balance fluids in the cells, increases the beneficial effects of estrogen on blood vessels, increases metabolic rate, natural diuretic, so helps you to lose excess water, natural antidepressant, 
anti-inflammatory, stimulates the production of new bone, stimulates the action of thyroid hormone, improves libido, helps restore proper cell oxygen, helps also to convert estrogen safely, promotes immunity, and is neuroprotective. All effects that we see with natural progesterone, but not with synthetic progesterones. Kind of important. Studies have shown that progesterone does not, natural progesterone does not induce estrogen stimulated breast cell proliferation, but synthetic progesterone does. And here you have it again. It's the same thing. It's what I've said before, but just reinforcing from another study. It found women who used estrogen in combination with synthetic progestin had a 69% increased risk of developing breast cancer when compared to women who never took HRT. Women who used progesterone in combination with estrogen, and that's natural progesterone, had no increased risk of developing breast cancer compared to women that did not, that did not use HRT. So the story is clear. It's clear as far as the science is concerned. And that's the, that was a, a, the study, Fornia, in 2008. Okay, one other thing I want to say about es estrogen, and this comes back partly to uh, the nutrition side. <coughs> Here you have estrogen being broken down in the body. And ladies, there are two main pathways that it's broken down. <coughs> You have the, the two hydroxy estrogens, which are safe and non-damaging, uh, but you have the 16 and 4 hydroxy, which are toxic, can damage breast and uterus. In fact, all estrogen sensitive tissue. Now, all women will produce a proportion of both of these. But if you're a woman who produces toxic estrogens, and this is reflective of your genes, your genetics, it's how your genes express, because the enzymes that break down estrogen. If you're a toxic estrogen producer, ladies, should you have HRT? Should you have estrogen? Well, <laughs> let me tell you one more thing to complete the question, really, <coughs> or the answer to the question. Even if a woman is a toxic estrogen producer, if, if you put that woman on cruciferous vegetable extracts, or get her to eat more broccoli, kale, cabbage, cauliflower, or give her more iodine in her diet. I'm just talking two things. There are other ways, but I'm just picking out two. You will change her from a toxic estrogen producer to a non-toxic producer. No, no. Now, and I ask the question again. The answer is yes, as long as you make sure you cater to the way she's metabolizing her estrogen. Now, doctors dole out HRT without even measuring this. So here is a ultra safe, not only is to use a bioidentical form of hormone, but in conjunction with that, you address how is she metabolizing her estrogen? Can I give her extra protection over and above what I'm doing with natural progesterone? And the answer is yes, you can. And that's what you do. So what you're actually, what that is an example of is how various nutrients can influence gene expression. Our genes are not written in stone, unchangeable. They are influenced by the environment, and a lot of the time they're influenced by key nutrients, particularly plant nutrients. And there's an example of it. And that's what I, one of the tests I do in all women, especially if there's an increased risk of breast cancer, or if there's a family history of breast cancer, I want to know what's the mechanism that may have led to that, can we do something about that to reduce her risk? Now, here's the thing. <clears throat> and, you know, if, ladies, if you've had a hysterectomy, the, the story goes in modern medicine, if you've had a hysterectomy, we can give you estrogen without progesterone. That's a big mistake. That's a big mistake. Because, because progesterone receptors, as well as estrogen, are also present elsewhere in the body. They're present in bone, in the, in the brain, in the breast. So even if you've had your uterus removed, that doesn't mean your body doesn't need to see progesterone elsewhere. And as we've established already, progesterone protects women's breasts from breast cancer. So if you give a woman estrogen just because she's had her uterus removed, what about her breasts? You see the, the risk in doing that. It's not safe medicine. And that's not the way I practice medicine anyway. <coughs> Now, this is a woman without progesterone. <coughs> and this is a woman with progesterone. 
and I, pr I kid you not, progesterone is that transforming to women. It is the brain calming hormone for women. So commonly, when women who go into perimenopause or menopause start complaining, I'm more anxious, I'm more agitated, I'm getting more upset, more easily agitated, the reason she's like that is because she needs progesterone back. It's the brain calming hormone, whereas estrogen is the brain stimulatory hormone. The brain needs to see both of those, not just one. <coughs> now these are the psychic effects of progesterone. Reducing anxiety, irritability, well, sorry, lack of progesterone, anxiety, irritability, hyper-emotionality, sound familiar? Hypersensitivity, nervousness, superficial, restless sleep. Best way to restore good sleep to women who are perimenopause and menopause, give them progesterone. Honestly, they don't need sleeping tablets, just give them progesterone back. The number of patients we have where a woman has low progesterone, you restore progesterone, they start sleeping like a baby again. No sex desire, so progesterone is also related to des sexual desire as well, not just testosterone and estrogen. Some effects of progesterone, balancing the actions of estrogen, promotes thermogenesis so you burn calories more efficiently, aids thyroid function, helps stabilize blood sugar, normalizes zinc and copper ratios, promotes proper cell oxygen levels. Progesterone assists thyroid function so it helps your thyroid function better. Very simple slide. <coughs> to show you that you make all of your hormones from cholesterol, one of the biggest, uh, one of the biggest uh, dangers of taking statins is you block your, bo uh, your body's ability, uh, because of your blocking cholesterol production, you block your body's ability to produce hormones. So one of the negative effects of statins is it stops your hormone production. So what I'm showing you here is pregnenolone going to DHEA, then DHEA coming down to estrogen down here, progesterone here, and then down to cortisol on this side, progesterone here. So <clears throat> these precursor hormones, pregnenolone, DHEA, also useful and important to address. I'll say a bit about those in a minute. <clears throat> so d here it is, DHEA. Didn't realize it was that soon. So DHEA, boosts energy level, is effective against stress, improves sleep, improves powers of recollection, strengthens the immune system, improves lean mass, and it's, remember, one of the first hormones to fall starts falling in your 30s. By the time you reach 70, you've got 25% of your DHEA left, okay? <coughs> uh, DHEA also fights insulin resistance, so it's great for metabolism. Also, notice here, less glycation, so it reduces that damaging effect to proteins of high sugars, so less glycation. It's why a lot of, of anti-aging doctors like to prescribe DHA because it does a lot to support your hormones and do other things in its own right. DHA also is an erotic hormone. It, it improves sexual satisfaction and improves arousal. And this is just to show you DHA is very important to stress resistance. DHA cortisol are in balance and as we age, our DHA declines making us more prone to stress. Uh, not just psychological stress, but physical stress as well. By restoring DHEA, it's a way of bolstering your stress resilience. So other functions of DHEA, decreases cholesterol triglycerides, decreases formation of fatty deposits, prevents blood clots, increases bone growth, promotes weight loss, increases sense of well-being, helps the body repair itself, maintain tissues, decreases allergic reactions. There's quite a, a long list of positive effects, isn't it? Uh, let's touch on testosterone a little bit. We know that uh, testosterone is good for men who have erectile dysfunction. And actually, guys, transdermal, so delivered through the skin, is more effective than oral or intramuscular injected testosterone. So we know that. So transdermal testosterone is the way to go. Or, or uh, through a mucosal surface, so a lozenge or even uh, uh, rectally, so it's absorbed through the mucosa is better. <coughs> testosterone in men and women increases sexual interest, increases sense of emotional well-being, increases muscular strength and mass, helps maintain memory, helps skin from, or, or prevents skin from sagging, decreases excess body fat, helps maintain bone strength, elevates noradrenaline in the brain, which is a mood elevating effect. Pregnenolone, this is another master hormone. I just have one slide on this. That's why I say, you know, this is a real, really a workshop. I'm just giving you a flavor. What does pregnenolone do? 
Pregnenolone is an important brain neurosteroid. It regulates the balance between excitation and inhibition in the nervous system. It increases resistance to stress, improves energy both physically and mentally, enhances nerve transmission and memory, reduces pain and inflammation. It's an anti-inflammatory hormone. It blocks the production of acid-forming compounds, helps to repair nerve damage, promotes mood elevation, improves sleep, enhances acetylcholine transmission, important brain neurotransmitter, increases learning memory and alertness. So you see, as we age and we, we start to have a deficiency in these hormones, we start to lose these functions. So one of the, thing about, one of the things about being involved with hormonal medicine and restoring hormones in their natural form is that you, you can restore a lot of this function that we're losing as we age. I'm going to touch, I'm coming close to the end now, but I'm going to touch a little bit on <coughs> some, of my, some of my own product developments, which by now you should probably gather have arisen from an understanding of nutrition, the role of oxidative stress in aging, the role of inflammation in stress, and an understanding of hormones. Okay, so why do I dislike Botox? <coughs> well, I dislike it for many reasons but I dislike it mainly because I don't believe it gives you a, pr a real anti-aging effect. It just gives you a muscle relaxant effect, which gives the impression that you have younger looking skin because it has less wrinkles. But it's doing absolutely zero to restore youthful integrity to the skin. Would you agree with that? <coughs> it's a mask effect. I'm interested in what can you do to build youthful skin, not just create a mask effect. How can you restore skin so it's more youthful? Now, the other thing I dislike about Botox, it is not without the risk of side effects. And if any of you, if any of you have five minutes to Google BotoxSupportCommunity.com, it makes ab interesting reading because it's stuff you won't necessarily read about uh, in mainstream press. But there, are, uh, there can be some quite serious side effects. Uh, some of them, well, main, most of them are mainly neurological. Uh, again, this has come from this site. A lot of it is to do with retention of Botox in the nervous system, creating some brain effects, anxiety, increased risk of, of depression, but also neuralgias, etc. So uh, that's another thing I don't like about it. And also the fact that it doesn't, it's not an, a real anti-aging effect. Now one of the problems with restoring youthful skin, oh I forgot I had this moving graphic in there, that's the that's electron micrograph of a skin surface. Doesn't look too hot, does it really? <laughs> but that's the skin surface. But here it should, this is the sort of layer, layer, it's meant to be a barrier, the skin. One of the challenges with creating a cream, <coughs> and by the way, ladies and gentlemen, most creams on the market do nothing more than hydrate. The reason is, is because it's very difficult to penetrate that barrier significantly, unless you use the right vehicle to do it. <coughs> Just to remind you, this is a slide which shows women who, this is collagen content of skin in women with, on hormones, or HRT, collagen content of skin women who don't have hormones. The hormones build collagen content of skin. So that should give us a clue. Now that just shows you when you, uh, e estrogen increases pro-collagen, collagen and actin in the skin. It also increases high molecular weight hyaluronic acid, which is anti-inflammatory and hydrates the skin. So estrogen has that effect. Now here's the good news, ladies and gentlemen, is that there is research which shows that even when you put the hormones onto the surface of the skin topically in the right form, it has the, the hormones have the same collagen elastin building effect as when you restore them systemically. So from all of my work, I got interested in this. I thought, oh, hang on a minute. Maybe there's an opportunity here to, to make some inroads. So I developed a skin rage called Biojeune. Do you like the name? Yeah. Biojeune has a certain je ne sais quoi, doesn't it? So Biojeune there's, is a range of skin creams based on antioxidant effects, anti-inflammatory effects, and the right combination of bioidentical hormones to restore proper youthful integrity to the skin. So there's one for women age 40 plus, which we call original. There's one for women 30 plus. There's one for men. There's a night cream, which has different hormone in. 
and there's a basic one without hormones for younger people. That just has all the other bioactive ingredients, but not hormones. So I, I also, part of my rejuvenation program, it, there's a thing here on it, but, uh, and we've got some leaflets, I think in your packs they're in there. So um, the, my program really revolves around a, a natural solution, which is use, use of these creams, a phototherapy mask, which helps to build collagen. There are two, one called Collarlift and one called Collagen, and also a supplement, which basically is doing three things, lowering inflammation, reducing oxidative stress, and improving mitochondrial function. So I'm not giving too much away if I tell you that's what it does. But by doing that, you start to see how, what I'm trying to do is, is, is create an anti-aging effect on the skin itself, but also give some people, give something internally which gives anti-aging effects internally as well. And that will help the skin. <coughs> so you don't need invasive therapies. The, this is before and after three months in the top one on bottom left and two months on the right. You don't need invasive therapies to create an anti-aging effect on the, on the skin. <laughs> now all of the, you, the, all of the hormone work and one of the, one of the advantages of doing it for so long, and it's been now 14 years or so, is it gives you opportunities to impact in other ways. A lot of women, this is mainly for women um, the, the supplement is for men. But one of the common things that, that women don't confess to, and maybe it's because I'm male, but they don't like to offer up the fact that they have poor sexual function. So that led me to, to develop and create ways of improving that for women without being invasive. So what I did is I created a range called Bio-O products. It's a topical hormone cream which which, in, it, which is applied to the erogenous zones to increase sensitivity. There's a supplement which improves libido, and that's for men and women. There's a, a spray which improves uh, at sexual function. I'll show you in the next slide. And also for women who are troubled by dryness, uh, we have the, the vaginal gels which, which restore and rejuvenate the vaginal lining, basically. So the, the whole program is designed to improve orgasmic potential, particularly in women. Uh, and it, by the way, if you want to see some testimonials, which I'm not going to show you now, go to our website and just look on that section and you'll, you'll see some testimonials from people who've tried this. Now, oxytocin is the sort of erotic or emotional hormone, if you like. It's, it's the spray that we use. It, it, in men and women, it increases sexual desire, improves it, it, it improves bonding and also it increases the uh, orgasmic potential. Often women will have multiple orgasms when they use oxytocin. So there are simple ways, non-invasive, uh, non-toxic, of improving sexual function in men and women. <coughs> melatonin, I'll just touch on this. I told you it was a long talk. I told you I need half a day to do this. But melatonin, <coughs> if you give aging mice Mel these, both, these mice are both the same age. If you give aging mice melatonin in their drinking water, they start to look <coughs> and behave like younger mice. So there's something about melatonin which, is, which turns back the biological clocks, and we don't fully understand it. But there's something very important about melatonin. Melatonin is a hormone you produce between 12 and 4 a.m. at night, and it's to do with, uh, with balancing your circadian biological rhythm but it's also anti-aging. I wrote a summary paper on this. If any of you want it, just ask one of my girls. We're happy to send you a PDF of it. Your melatonin universal guardian. <coughs> melatonin inhibits breast cancer. It reduces ri women's risk of breast cancer. And this is shown in this slide because here you have a control. This is breast cancer risk after menopause. This is what happens when women take melatonin. So melatonin somehow reduces risk of breast cancer, and there are multiple mechanisms by which it, do, it, it probably does that. But I'm just throwing that out there. Risk reduction, better aging, and also redu reducing your risk of a disease process. Vitamin D needs a mention because uh, women who have low vitamin D have an increased risk of breast cancer. Vitamin D is also anti-inflammatory, and 70% of women, uh, uh, men and women who come to see me are uh, either deficient or insufficient in vitamin D. And it plays critical roles in human health. 
It's because it's anti-inflammatory, it's got to be in the list of anti-aging uh, substances. But it protects women against breast cancer and protects men and women against all cancers when your level is above 100. Big study two years ago showed that. So the way to do hormones properly is people should really be uh, monitored. We don't just dole out hormones. We measure people's baseline hormone levels. Uh, and we measure, if we're interested in looking at their aging, we measure their inflammation scores, their metabolic markers. There are ways of measuring these things which, which show your, that you're at increased risk of either degenerating quicker or aging faster and are at risk of disease process. So by measuring those, it gives us a window to see how we can stop a person reaching a point where they're having degenerative disorder. So it's important to measure and it's important once you give men or women hormones to monitor. So we usually do that in order to get the dose right for each individual, and that's important. Hormonal therapy should be done on an individual basis because not every bond needs the same doses for everything. Okay, and that's, that's important. It needs to be done properly by someone who knows what they're doing. <clears throat> I'm gonna, it's coming to the end now, but out of the same principle of looking at inflammation, looking at oxidative stress, looking at how hormones impact, and in this, in this case, on hair fall, this is, this is for men, primarily. I developed Biogro hair. <clears throat> now, Biogro hair is a combination of all of these mechanisms of action, but applied to the scalp. So we have a lotion and, and a capsule. But here, that's after eight weeks. Impressive? Eight weeks. I challenge the Propecia makers, Minoxidil, to achieve that in eight weeks. They can't. Uh, and, uh, the re and the reason why I developed this is because I don't like the fact that Minoxidil doesn't work very well. Once you start using it, you have to use it for life. Propecia, which is, the, uh, which is basically the 5-alpha uh, reductase inhibitor, it blocks testosterone to dihydrotestosterone in men, which does have an impact on hair fall. But what Merck forgot to tell people, and they were pulled up about it, they now have over 1,200 lawsuits from men who have been irreversibly damaged by Propecia because it's affected their libido long term and affected their psychology. So it's not funny. So Propecia I I is for hair growth, it's a pill, but I wanted to do something that was non invasive but effective. Eight weeks. How about that? That's six months, second picture. I think the, the, the last one is, is a bit longer. But I think you'll agree, non-invasive. And this one, that's 12 weeks. So I'm onto something with this. But all I've done is applied some of the knowledge I have on hormones with some of the knowledge I have on nutrition and aging and brought that together. And guess what happens? This is just an example of what you can do when you get the hormones right and you get the nutrients in there in the right way. So in summary, <clears throat> I know it's been a long talk, and trust me, my voice is feeling it. <clears throat> what we've said, nutrients and bioidentical hormones are natural ways to slow aging. Nutrients and diet to lower oxidative stress, inflammation, and improve metabolism are key. Calorie restriction and fasting mimicking diet, and by the way, I forgot to say, fasting mimicking diets were we're launching a new fat loss program in The Natural Doctor which will incorporate these fasting mimicking diets. It's very important because you get better aging and you also lose fat at the same time. <coughs> uh, calorie restriction, fasting mimicking diets we mentioned as important. Diets rich in fruit, vegetables, polyphenols, omega-3s, crucial to reducing aging and disease for all the reasons we said. Bioidentical hormone replacement therapy is shown to be safer than uh, HRT and we sh I showed you several uh, pieces of science on that. I've shown you a non-toxic, non-surgical facial rejuvenation uh, uh, program and I've also showed that when you apply the key anti-aging mechanisms to, uh, for broader application you can see other significant reversals, you can see increased hair growth and enhanced sexual function. I think that might be the last slide. No, that's the last slide. For those of you who don't have our contact details and want to get in touch, but it's on all of the information that's been left on your chairs anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for listening. <laughs>